Hello, this is Patrick. You're watching Tesla Trip, and welcome to some more Tesla news. Lots of exciting stuff going on this week. Finally, a lot of capabilities towards full self-driving in Tesla world. There was a software update, version 2019.8.3, which enables auto steer stoplight warning. So this is pretty cool. It's basically, in some cases, detecting stoplights and letting you know, hey, yo, um, there's a stoplight coming up. Uh, it doesn't actually do anything at this point, but, you know, as they validate it more, eventually this will get to where the car can stop itself at stop lights and signs and uh, stop markings on the roads. It was reported earlier that it could do, that it's detecting the stop markings on roads, so this is just kind of the next step. Also, uh, Autopilot's now giving the right-of-way to cars merging with signals on, so that's pretty cool. So if somebody's turning on the turn signal, and you're on the freeway, your car will slow, will slow down to let them in, which is pretty pretty cool and necessary for any full self-driving that is coming forward. Also, the first demo videos of Enhanced Summon are coming out right now, and it's pretty cool. It's a little, The car's a little slow, but basically what people are showing off right now is where the car's already parked, you, you can come out of a store, and you hold down on the phone, and the car will start, will back up and come and get you. It'll come to where you are at. And I, there's no demos of it going to park itself, so I don't know if that's probably not gonna be in the first release, but it's pretty cool. And it, it it's interesting, I saw like four different videos, I'm not even really gonna show them here because uh, I need to get permission from everybody, but I do have links so you can check them out below. And yeah, this is exciting. I can't, I can't wait to see how this advanced summon works especially in my like garage, there's a kind of a tight corner you got to go around. And I think the car could do a perfect job of that. So we could fit both of our cars in there and they could maneuver themselves out and park in front of the house because our garage is behind the house all by themselves. Elon tweeted out that sentry mode will have some additional options coming on so that you can have it be always on. You can exclude it at home or at work or uh, certain locations that you have saved or you can have it ask. So anytime you get out of the car, it'll ask you want to turn on sentry mode. And this is where it's monitoring the car 360 degrees around the vehicle and recording. So a lot of people were saying, well, hey man, I don't want to need to record at home all the time. This is how you, you can have it, you know, turn off when you don't need it on all the time. Their Tesla referral program, they're bringing it back. So this is pretty cool. Uh, thank you guys so much. If you used my referral code in the past, I'm not going to try and pitch it too hard, but um, my code is 4254, and, uh, Patrick4254, and if you use it, you get a thousand free miles of supercharging when you purchase the new Tesla. And then I get the exact same thing. So on uh, my Model 3, I'll get the thousand miles of free supercharging and get entered into a raffle to win a Founders Model Y or a Roadster, which they do quarterly. So the, um, the Y's monthly, the Roadsters Quarterly, and they're both signed by Elon and Franz. So if you own a Tesla and someone uses your referral program, you already have free supercharging, what they'll do is they'll give you two entries into the raffle for the Founders Model Y or the Roadster. It's good to see it's back. It's a little bit different, but I'm glad. I think um, it, you know, it gives people some more incentive to really push electric vehicles, and I don't really think Tesla needs it, but it doesn't hurt, and it's kind of fun. Anyways. If you're looking at buying a Tesla, the prices did go up a little bit, but not a whole lot. Everybody was thinking about 3%. Uh, the Model 3, 35,000 didn't go up at all. The other ones only went up like 500 to 1,000, 1,500 on the top end. Yeah, so it's not it's not terrible. You, you still can, the cool thing is, is now you can get free supercharging for 1,000 miles. <laughs> so that, that kind of shows the value in the free supercharging. Uh, only real disadvantage is if you were looking to get a standard range Model S that is no longer available. They dropped that from the lineup like they did with the Model X. So both on the Model X and S, there's only one battery and that's the long range version. So we'll see what they're doing. I have a theory that they are gonna be changing the battery type soon, maybe in the fall. And that's where the price hike's gonna be. And yeah, it'll be able to accept the higher charging rate of the Model 3, who knows? On Twitter, it's going around that version three hardware is now coming in the current Model S's and X's. So that's very interesting. <laughs> I wonder how soon they're gonna be rolling out the upgrades for people that have hardware two and 2.5. Uh, 
And it, it sounds like, you know, the full self-driving is coming along and we should have it really soon, or at least features that have it really soon. And then for everybody else, they're finally gonna update the browser inside all the Teslas with Chromium. Elon Musk's posted on Twitter that they're upgrading it. And hopefully uh, this is what's gonna enable other video games. Cause like Google was announcing earlier this week that they have a online streaming platform that'll work through the Google browser. Also Netflix, Hulu, those types of applications when you're parked, hopefully will be able to work and a lot, a lot more internet options within the Tesla's main screen themselves. I hope it works on all versions. This may be limited though to just the newer UMCs that came out about a year ago. If you guys know, please, please post below. I don't, uh, any kind of feedback would be great. Tesla is killing its yearly service program for maintaining the vehicles. So basically they said electric cars don't need as much maintenance, so you'll save a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. Yet, you know, you need to go in annually for this annual maintenance where they check fluids and rotate tires and things like that. Now they're saying they're not gonna need that anymore. They've shown the reliability of the vehicles without annual checkups to be fine and that they can remotely diagnose and let you know when you need to go in for something. There's a list of things that they still recommend, but they're only about $150 a piece. So that's a lot less than paying 500 to anywhere $1,000, depending on the annual service requirements that they're suggesting. So that's kind of different. <laughs> I tried to take in my model three for annual service and they said no. They said it's, an, it's a biannual, they get every other year. You just need to rotate the tires. So we had the tires rotated and they told me to come back in another year. So <laughs> apparently that's even gone now. I just need to take it in, I guess, when certain things need done and the test will let you know. Anyways, uh, exciting times. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you have any uh, information on any of these topics below or any questions. Please subscribe if you haven't. It lets me know you guys are watching. Really close to 10,000 uh, subscribers now. And uh, I'm on Twitter at Walking Crow if you want to talk. Thanks, guys. Bye. Right? Look at this. People in LA, they're like, they don't need range. They're just stuck in traffic all day anyways.